Hi, and welcome to Coffee with Claire. Have you ever felt a little bit like you're not good enough? Have you ever felt like that everyone else in the world has got it way better than you? Well, I think a lot of times we have um, fallen prey to that social media kind of thing that we see where everybody's life is beautiful and brilliant on social media. Facebook, everyone posts happy pictures of their family in these fabulous vacation places. Or in Twitter, we get little snippets of how wonderful a new product or service is. But you know, in reality, everyone has their difficulties. Everybody has their challenges. And so what I'd like to do is remind you that when we're, when we're seeing those kinds of things, we're really seeing through somebody's filter. They either want you to buy a product or service, or they want to sell you on the fact that their life is wonderful, right? And sometimes when we're, when we're on Facebook and social media, uh, it's, it's real easy to be able to put that filter in front of us before we present ourselves to the world, the community, whatever. But when we're talking face to face, a lot of times because of all the stimulation we have from that interaction, we don't have those filters. And so all of a sudden, we're very vulnerable in we're ta when we're talking to people. And um, does your body language actually match your um, your words and um, in the ontological coaching that I do, we use um, linguistics, moods and emotion, and body language as a trifecta to communicate. And um, a lot of times, what we say doesn't isn't really congruent with the way we're we're showing up. For example, I was coaching a guy and um, he says, "I don't get it, Claire. I go into these meetings, I am smiling, I am happy, and everyone just shuts down as soon as I walk in the door." And I said, "All right, John, show me what you're doing." And he says, "Okay, so I'm going like this." And then he had his hands like this. And I'm like, "John, look at your hands." And he's like, "What?" Oh, I look like I'm getting ready to go in for a fight. It's like, yeah, your your face up here is saying, you know, you're all happy, but down here, you you look like you're getting ready to fight them. So, so we want to be very, very aware of how we're showing up. And um, if you're not exactly sure, then that's the first step: is to really be thinking about who you are. Observe yourself. How are you showing up? And then, what action? are you taking and then are you getting the result that you want so this is called the observer action result you observe yourself and then you make an action and then you evaluate the result and if the result isn't exactly what you want then you go back you look at what you did you change the action just a little bit and you see if you get a different result so my my homework for you this week is to think about who you are, how you show up in the world, and is how you're showing up congruent to where you where you really want to be. And if it isn't, take a look at your action, tweak it a little bit, and look for a different result. As you know, on Coffee with Claire, we're always looking for individuals who have interesting businesses, people who take care of things and people around them, and of course, like to have fun. We are thrilled to have on our show today, as a repeat guest, Dr. Edward Llewellyn, who holds an honorary doctorate of divinity, certifications as a life coach, NLP practitioner, and value-added business consultant. Dr. Llewellyn is also a published author and has extensive education around neuroscience and the part that it plays in our daily interactions and overall mindset to success. I'm really excited today to share with you that we will be learning from Dr. Llewellyn together as he has become our Coffee with Claire show expert on these topics and will be sharing with us on a consistent basis how we can help ourselves get unstuck and get out of our own way. I have a deep respect for his work and I know as you get to know him, you will too. Please help me welcome back Dr. Edward Llewellyn. Woohoo! Hey. I'm so glad you're here. I am excited to be here. And you know what? Today we are going to introduce to the Coffee with Claire world that our new series together. That's right. It's going to be called High Impact Living, and Dr. Ed will have a recurring guest role on, on uh, Coffee with Claire, just like Oprah's Dr. Phil, and he'll be sharing some of his techniques around how we can all enjoy a high impact life. That's right. I'm ready. Are you? Yes. Let's do it. Okay. So. Let's start with just the, some basic beginning definitions. So let's define for the audience what high impact living really means. Okay. So 
If you've ever felt like you go through life and life is just a routine and you do the same thing, you get up in the morning, you have the same routine you go through, you drive the same way to work, you park in the same place, you go into work, you do the same things, and kind of the same thing when you come home. You, or maybe at lunch at work you uh, have the same thing or you go to the same place and you get the idea. So it's just life just becomes routine and you wonder where's the fun? Yeah. Where's the excitement? Yes. So that's living unintentionally. Okay. So it's, it's you know there's a lot of people that say well Success is a is what you do routinely. However, yes, I've heard that. <clears throat> there is something to be said for breaking up that routine, because once we get into a, a, a trance, if you will, of life, uh. it, we start living without intention. Mm -hmm. And in fact, on my way here to the show today, there was a gentleman in the car, and he noticed something about a building uh, that another person in the car didn't notice. But it happened some time ago, and she said, well, she ju she'd just taken that same route every day, never even noticed the change. Mm. And that's what high-impact living is, is getting out of just that routine of the same thing every day, only, you know, same, same things you eat, drink, say, do, be, and living life with intention. So it really is, is about just kind of breaking away from that routine and um, allowing yourself to experience things in a little different way? Sure. Okay, awesome. So um, let's tell the audience about the areas we're going to focus on during the High Impact Living series. Okay. So uh, I have a new book out. It's called Life Mastery, The Fully Functional Life, and it deals with uh, weight loss, a healthy fit lifestyle, relationships, uh, the uh, financial uh, security, mm -hmm. professional development, and then volunteering. So those are the six areas we're going to, we're going to be talking about on a, a high, high impact living. And uh, just out of curiosity, how did you choose those six areas? So as, uh, as me and my team, as we did some research on, on the book itself, what we found is that those are the six areas that when people search for self-improvement, self-development, mm -hmm. those are the er six top areas that they search for. And I was surprised that weight, weight loss is the number one. That's, you were surprised? Uh, that's, well, and, and I'm sure we're going to get into that a little bit but and in, in, in talk about why that's the case. But yes, I was. I was actually surprised uh, that weight loss would be the number one. Well, you know, there's a, a, a lot of people spend a lot of money on all those weight loss products and, and services and gyms and all that good stuff. So it'll be interesting to get your take on on how, you know, working with you can help with that that whole process because it's a billion dollar industry. I mean, you know, there's people that spend tons of money every every year and um, they lose the weight and then they gain it back and they lose the weight and get it back. So I'm real interested in, in hearing what, what you've got to say about that. Um, so help our viewers understand a little bit about how they're going to be able to get the most benefit from our series. Okay. So, of course, number one, tuning in, and we'll make you aware of when we're going to be having the show, but then participating because we're going to be on social media. So make sure that you participate. You ask questions and participate as much as you want to uh, through social media. So um, let's, let's talk about a, a couple of examples of some of the unique information that our viewers can expect from the High Impact Living series. Okay. And so let's just go ahead and jump right into weight loss. Okay, let's that okay? do that. Sure. So you mentioned <clears throat> that it's a, a multi-billion dollar industry. And you have diets, you've got pills, you've got surgeries, you've got exercise programs. You know, all these things that feed into this whole weight loss uh, area. And those are all external things. Those are things that f we do from the outside. We, you know, the, again, the foods we eat, the, the pills we take, and all that. And what we're trying to do is <clears throat> force our body into 
uh, a, a situation where it you know speeds up metabolism. Uh, we we exercise so that we spend more calories than what we take in, mm -hmm. and, and all those things. And the problem with it being all external, well, it, the good thing for the, for those companies is. Uh, because those are, are all external. People try one program after another, one pill after another, one exercise program after another because the previous ones either worked minimally or didn't work at all. Yeah. <clears throat> and this is what keeps fueling and feeding this industry with these billions of dollars. The problem is is that they don't address from the inside what's happening. Mm -hmm. And so let me give you just a, a a sound bite, if you will, of where what when I work with a person with weight loss, why it's different than all these. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, you need to exercise, right. eat right, and those kind of things. So I'm not saying don't do those things. I'm just saying it's not going to have as much impact as working from the inside. Okay. So <clears throat> attached with weight loss, uh, it's been shown that our emotions are heavily involved uh, with either losing or gaining weight. And most people will attest, okay, I get sad, I get bored, I get, you know. Lonely, yeah. I Exactly, right. any, you know, Anxious. any of those things. Yeah. I'm going through, I'm going through, you know, I lost my job, I'm going through divorce, I'm, you know, some, you know, life-defining event mm -hmm. is taking place. Yeah. And all of a sudden they find themselves, you know, they get out that bag of chips, <laughs> I remember one lady, <clears throat> she told me she used to just sit there and just, it's kind of like this. Wow. It was just an odd, you know, from the bag of chips to her mouth. Talk about being in a trance. <laughs> she was. <clears throat> Absolutely. Absolutely. And her husband walked in one time and said something to her and, you know, she was. <laughs> she chips everywhere. <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> so what, what, uh, so what was going on was, you know, emotions. And the biggest emotion that affects people is fear. So this, this fear, what happens inside the mind, the mind goes, oh, you're in danger. And, you know, again, get, at some point we can get into the whole neuroscience behind it, but there's, there's a nerve called the vagus nerve that goes from the brain all the way through the body down into the stomach. And it's what sends up to the mind uh, the, the, to be sick, to go into fight or flight, all those kind of things. And once that vagus nerve gets stimulated, uh, what it sa tells the mind tells the body to do is, we need a we need protection. Okay. So let's build a layer of fat around ourselves ah. to protect ourselves. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And then there's two more reasons for it. Uh, and when you're in fight or flight, you need extra food, mm -hmm. so it gives you those calories to burn. And the third one is if there is no food. Again, it's a, it's a reserve for it to be able to draw on. So when the body or when the mind goes into that state of that fear, mm -hmm. it creates, creates these things and it doesn't matter. You can do all the exercising you want, you can take all the pills you want, you can have the surgeries, you can do all these things and it's going to come back if that fear is still there. Wow. So through your techniques, how are you helping people work through that that part, the fear part? Because you know you're right. There's lots of places that they can get all these external things. You know the the diet that they follow and the exercise program that they follow. You know with their their conscious brain. Right. So how are you different than some of those other programs out there? So again, what uh, when I work with a person, I help them get rid of those emotions that are causing. The, the, the fat to appear in the first place. And again, I just want to emphasize that I'm not saying to, to, to not live a healthy life. Right, to, to, right. You know, I encourage people to eat you know, proteins, fruits, vegetables, stay away from the sugars and so forth that unfortunately our society has uh, gotten so uh, much of. <clears throat> Almost addicted to, really. It, but when I work with someone, what, what I do is I help them to get rid of those emotions behind what's happening. And so instead of reaching for that piece of chocolate cake, they reach for maybe, let's say, cheese and, you know, uh, maybe a meat snack. Um, one of my clients, it was so funny, <clears throat> I was in my office one day and he calls me up and he says, uh, 
He says, darn you. <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> he, he says, I was all set. He says, on my way, I was going to the buffet, I was going to get my chicken fried steak, my mashed potatoes, my rolls. That sounds good. <laughs> he says, the next thing I found, I was standing in line at the buffet getting rabbit food. <laughs> He says, how did you do that? Darn it, <clears throat> Dr. Ed. You made me eat healthy. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, but that's, that's the difference is it, it, just as automatically as people right now go for the bad foods, mm -hmm. by reprogramming their subconscious mind, they can go for the good foods. And it's, it's like it takes little to no effort because it's just like this gentleman I was talking about. His name's Michael. Michael went from <clears throat> being overweight, his knees hurting, um, basically pretty lethargic, to uh, at 10 years uh, ago he used to run five miles a day, he's back to doing that. Wow. And it's really just from you helping, what, unleash some things from his subconscious or un how, do, how does that, I mean, how would you describe that to the audience? Well, it, uh, our minds are constantly being programmed. And unfortunately, it's easier than what most people think to manipulate our own minds or for other, excuse me, <clears throat> for other people to manip manipulate our minds. Mm. And people can interject ideas into our brain, and especially uh, before nine years old, that happens. Okay. Uh, but even if they get us in a, in, a, in a frantic state, it's much easier just to boom, put, put into our minds a different idea. We go to a doctor. They tell us we have a certain disease, and they say, well, you know, but, and here's all the things we're going to do, and what do we do? We just automatically accept it. We just accept it because we're f afraid, and... Oh, that interesting? And they, they're the expert, right? Because they're the doctor. They've got the knowledge. Again, that's, that's part of our, our subconscious programming is if a person is in authority, they wear a white coat, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're educated, we should automatically assume that what they're telling us is right. And if you want, I'll, I'll tell you my own. I, yes, I would love for you to tell the audience about your own experience because you are just, well, you're defying odds. So, so I went, to, uh, been, uh, over the last year, I, I, I had a uh, lump of cancer removed from me about the size of my fist, it was in, in my chest. And uh, along with it, a couple of <clears throat> diseases popped up and as you can tell just from clearing my throat, one of them's called bronchiectasis. Uh, another one's called myasthenia gravis. And my dad has that myasthenia gravis. Yeah. By by again by mentally programming my own mind, I'm able. Uh, they, they tell me that I should should shouldn't even be able to walk. <laughs> that I should be in bed. Ta da! <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> So uh, my pulmonologist uh, a couple of weeks ago was doing some tests. One of them was on my heart. They didn't like the results, so they sent me for another test. And the, the results came back saying uh, that the right side of the heart is working at 25% and the left side of the heart's at 41%. Wow. So they sent me to a, a cardiologist and uh, this other, uh, then he did a, an actual uh, double catheter, so you know, all the way up into the heart, looking around, oh all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that was last week. <laughs> <laughs> and and he's, he tells me afterwards, he says, no, you're fine. He says, there's no blockages, uh, you know, the heart's just weak, and I assume that's just because the last year I've not been able to exercise like I normally do and so forth. Um, and then what he said was really revealing because when you think of 25% and 41%, you think, oh, it's barely working. <laughs> well, come to find out, uh, the average normal range is 50 to 75%. Wow. So it wasn't that far right, off. Right. And the other doctors apparently didn't know that, but because of their perception and the horrified look they had on their face when they told me the results, it was scared me. Of course. So that's how easily that, that our minds can be affected is when, especially because of emotion, we can, we can have a thought interjected into our mind and we believe it just because, again, they're a figure. And you've been able to defy these odds by working on yourself, right? And using your, your um, methodology internally. Absolutely. 
and uh, you know he keeps going to the doctor and the doctors are like well we need to validate our existence by giving you some more tests but they can't find anything <laughs> you know to to really heal him with so i think it's a your amazing testimonial to the the power of what you do well and <clears throat> there's lots and lots of evidence of the mind body connection and and there's a book called uh, biology of belief written by dr bruce lipton and it's he's a cellular biologist so you know this is a guy that really knows stuff yeah. and you know they're really using authority figure <laughs> <laughs> see how well it works <laughs> but he he talks about how you know we really do have so much more control over uh the diseases in our body and in and, and our body functioning than and than what we think and uh, going back to our original thought of living unintentionally mm -hmm. Because we get into such routines and we think we have no control over ourselves, then we allow ourselves to be able to, to just uh, get worse and worse when it comes to a disease or when it comes to losing weight, we give up. You know, there's all these things that once we learn that we can control our minds, then we're able to much better control what's going on with our bodies. Absolutely. And so, as you can see, Dr. Ed has got so much information inside his body that he is going to be sharing with us. And um, the, the six areas that we're going to be concentrating on is the weight loss that we talked about a little bit today, a fit and healthy lifestyle, relationships, both personal and professional, which all of us could use a little help on that, um, financial security, our careers and volunteering. And I wanted just to touch really quickly on volunteering. I thought that was kind of an interesting one out of the six that you said, you know, are the most searched for um, self-help. So how does that parlay into all of these other things that we're gonna be working on? I, I too, I, when I saw that, I was like, really? <laughs> and so here's the deal is that uh, I've done a lot of volunteering through the years. Uh, I was a volunteer pastor for 30 years. I have volunteered at the Los Angeles Homeless Shelter. I volunteered on several chambers of commerce uh, and advisory boards. Um, you know, just a lot of different things. Right now, I'm, I'm a volunteer for the American Heart Association or Cancer Association, um, you know, trying to raise money for that. Sure. And what happens so much of the time is the volunteers, they can be so few and far between that those who do volunteer can be taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, it's like, oh, you're here. You can do this and this and this. Right. Right. <laughs> you get rewarded with more work. <laughs> right. So in my new book, what I, uh, The Fully Functional Life, uh, Life Mastery, The Fully Functional Life, what I talk about is, you know, we've, we live a busy life. You know, if a person has a good heart, they want to help others, they want to volunteer, and then the volunteer organization w takes over and, and starts to dominate their time so much that all these other areas of their life start to be affected by it, including their family. Which goes back into the relationships and all that good stuff. So. Ab absolutely. So, and, and so many people wonder, well, who, what organization can I volunteer for uh, that I can really get the, the satisfaction I want? And that's also what I touch on is, is when you understand your core identity and your purpose in life, that will help you align what organizations that you volunteer Perfect. for. Yeah. Just so just because an organization needs a volunteer and you have some time doesn't make it a good match for you. Absolutely. So we're going to be working through all of those um, six things plus some other things just kind of, you know, peppered in between. And so I encourage you to watch for our announcements on both LinkedIn and Facebook to know when Dr. Ed is on next. So your homework for this week is to think about how you're showing up. Are you showing up authentically in congruency with how you really want to show up. Remember back to the observer action result model. If you observe yourself and take action and you don't get the result that you want, then just take a little bit of a different approach for your action and see what the result is and see if it's different. Give us a, a shout on Claire at coffeewithclaire.tv on our Cool Bean site and let us know how that goes for you. And remember to follow the fun. See you next time.